Today we're going to see how you can prepare your components for distribution on NPM. Specifically, I'm going to look at my vSwitch component, something I built in a previous lecture. It doesn't matter too much how it works for the purpose of this lecture, but it is a component, so we're going to have to make sure we build four different formats. We're going to have three different formats. The first is going to be the browser build, so people can consume this from a CDN. The second one is going to be the ES modules build for usage with things like Rollup and Webpack and even with regular ES modules in your browser. And the third is going to be the common JS build, which is targeting Node.js. And this one is used for server side rendering. We are going to use Rollup to build this. Uh, Rollup is a really good library for building libraries and you can check out the documentation here. So let's go ahead now and get started. So let's jump over here to our other file. Just to show you what we're building, it is a vSwitch component. Uh, it's all here, it's in a single file and it's fairly simple. We have one single export default here. So let's go ahead and get started with this one now. I have a new empty file called rollup.config.js and you have to either export a default object or a default array. In this case, I'm going to use an array because I'd like to have multiple builds and I'm going to have a new function called create entry just to kind of uh, share our configuration. It's going to take two arguments in this case. We're going to have the format. I'm going to target the browser build first. So I'm going to use the iffy format, which is immediately invoked function expression, a common way to build for browsers. And we're also going to have the file name here. I'm going to show you a little trick here. For the file names, all I'm going to do is import package from package.json. And that's going to give me access to all of my file names. If I have a look at package.json, you can see I've defined all my files up here. The main build is going to be for Node.js, which is indicated by this CJS extension here, CommonJS. We have the module build for ESM bundlers and we have the browser build for browsers. So I'm going to use these to get the correct file name. Let's go ahead and do that one now. So for example, I'm using the browser build here. I'm going to say package.browser and that's going to give me the correct file name. The next thing we need to do is create our create entry function. And that's going to take a single argument, which is going to be an array or an options object. Next thing I'm going to do is create a new constant called config, which is going to hold our rollup config. And I'm now going to return the config. I'm actually going to let rollup kind of guide me here. It has pretty good warnings. So hopefully we're going to get something interesting here. I'm going to go ahead and remove my old build files and then run yarn build. That yarn build is just a script. It's going to run yarn rollup dash c rollup config.js. And we are getting an error here. It's saying you must supply options.input to rollup. That means we need to tell it where to start bundling from. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have the input here and that's just going to be the vswitch.ts that is the file we're going to be building from. Let's save it off and give it another try. We're getting a completely different warning here. It's actually complaining about syntax. I am using TypeScript here and Rollup does not understand TypeScript out of the box. So we're going to have to tell it what to do. Let's jump up here. I'm going to go ahead and import a plugin called TS. And that's going to come from Rollup TS plugin or Rollup plugin TypeScript. It has TypeScript 2. This is not referring to TypeScript version 2. It's version 2 of this particular plugin. The next thing we need to do is use the plugins array and pass in our plugins. We're going to have the TS plugin here and I'm just going to leave it empty for now. We are going to put some options in later on. Just having this is going to be enough to let us build TypeScript in Rollup. We're getting a completely different error now, or actually it's a warning. We're going to deal with this one in a moment. What we're going to do first is make sure we're not actually writing the standard out. I'd like to write to the correct file. So let's go ahead and do that. We do that by passing in the output here and we have to pass in two things. The first thing is going to be the file, which is just going to be options.file. Remembering that we passed in the file where it down here which is going to be package.browser. We're also going to have the format here, which is just going to be options.format. Let's go ahead and give this one another try and see what we get. So it is correctly writing to the file dist uh, vswitchbrowser.js. We're getting some warnings here though. It's complaining about output.name as well as a missing global variable. What we need to do is tell rollup what the name of the global variable this library is going to be assigned as to. I'm going to call it vswitch. So what I'm actually going to do is just jump in here and say the name is going to be vswitch. Let's go ahead, save this one off and see what happens. We should hopefully get one less warning and we do. Let's go ahead and see what we've actually managed to build here. We've built the vswitch browser.js file. It's actually assigning our library correctly to the vswitch variable. This vswitch variable here corresponds to whatever you type into the name here. And it's actually an immediately invoked function, taking this global variable view as an argument. We can see here it's passing in view as a lowercase view. Anyone that's used view before knows it comes from our CDN as a global with a capital V view. So we're going to have to fix that one up. And that's actually what it's complaining about over here, missing global variable name. The other thing it's complaining about is unresolved dependencies and rollup is quite intelligent here. If I head over to vSwitch, it has this import here. Rollup recognizes I'm using a global CDN build and we're not going to have access to import. So it assumes this is going to be globally available. It's actually attempting to guess it down here, guessing view. Uh, it's obviously incorrect, it should be a capital V. 
which is what we need to refer to it up here as. So let's go ahead and do that. What we're going to do first is pass in the external array here. And that's just going to pass in an array of external variables just to tell Rollup we know this is external and not to worry about it. And this one is going to be the view external variable. The next thing we're going to need is this globals key in here. And we're going to tell it what the global variable view should be assigned to. In this case, it's going to be a capital view view. And this means it should expect this global variable to be available. Let's go ahead and run this one again. And we're not going to get any warnings this time around. Everything should be working correctly. And if we come over here, we can actually see this is hopefully improved. Jumping down to the very bottom of this, uh, we have to actually close this file just to make sure we have the latest version of it. Uh, let's go ahead and head back there. And now view is actually being passed in as a capital V. And this is exactly correct. It's going to be changed the variable name here, but that doesn't really matter too much. So this is all we need to do. We have our global V switch variable, which is our library. We assume we're going to have the global view variable, which we're going to get from a CDN. And that's actually enough to let us test this one out. I prepared a little test for this one in browser.html. All it does is import view from a CDN, which is view three. We import that dist file, vswitch browser.js, the one we just created. And we have a very simple app down here. It does indeed assume that we can register the, the vswitch component globally. And it also assumes view is globally available as well. Let's go ahead and test this one out. I'm going to start off a very simple uh, server on port 9000. Let's head over to port 9000 and see if that's actually working. It is going to be in browser.html and everything is working correctly here. You can see my console log, which is down here on line 53 and everything is working correctly here. If you don't know what the component does, it doesn't really matter. There are no errors, so we can be confident everything is working as it should be. So now that we've finished our browser build, let's move on to the next one. That is going to be our ES modules build for usage with Webpack or Rollup or something like that. Just going to head back to my terminal and close that server off. Now we're going to head back to our Rollup configuration and start extending this one. We've done a lot of work with our create entry function, which is going to save us a lot of time. So all we need to do is jump down here and make another create entry. This one's going to be an ES build and we're going to use the module build in here. Just to review that one, if we head back to package.json, we can see module is going to correspond to vSwitch ESM bundle at JS. So let's go ahead and run this one and see what happens. With a bit of luck, we're going to have another build built now as well. And if we actually head over to our, our dist file, we have vSwitch ESM bundle at JS. It actually looks remarkably similar to the original source code. It has made some changes, for example, var instead of const. And we also have function instead of an arrow function. But other than that, it's pretty much exactly the same. This is fine, but I like to actually build the type definitions as well for TypeScript users so they get a better experience. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to jump inside of my TS config and we're actually going to extend this one. We're going to pass in TS config override, which is going to override any default TS configuration we have. Inside of here, we're going to have the compiler options and we're just going to tell it when it compiles, it should also build the declarations. So I'm going to say declarations in here. And we only want to build this once when we're building the ES module build. So I'm going to see if options.format is equal to ES. Let's go ahead and give this one a try. With a bit of luck, we're going to build the module definitions as well. If we have a look inside of dist, we can see that it actually did work. We have a vSwitch DTS now. And if we go ahead and have a look at those, it is going to be this very basic module definition. It is getting the prop types correctly in here. We can see it has this case type up here. Let's actually see if this one is working. I created this random index file, which does absolutely nothing at all. I'm now going to go ahead and import that component just to see if it's working. So we're going to call it uh, vSwitch for now, and it's going to come from dist inside of vSwitch. Let's go ahead and try this one out. I'm actually going to change the name of this variable because we have a conflicting one. Let's just call it vs for now. If I jump down here and just say we're going to return a render function with that component, I should get the correct typing in here and we are actually getting it. It's recommending case here, which can be a number or a string. If I make it a number or a string, it's going to be fine. But if I make an object, which is invalid, we're actually going to get that one error, which is exactly what you would expect. And this is TypeScript doing work for us, which is great news. I'm going to delete this one for now since we know it's working, but we have got one side effect of putting those declarations in. You can see here, it's actually building declarations for the entire project, including the example directory and the source directory, which is not something I really want. I only want to build the declarations for my actual library. So we're going to have to specify and tell TypeScript not to do that. This is actually quite easy. All I need to do is jump inside of here and we're going to just extend this one and say exclude. And in this case, I'm going to exclude the source directory as well as the example directory. And this should only build the type declarations for the other relevant files. Let's go ahead and try this one again, and we should not be getting those extra type definitions anymore. If I do an ls and dist, you can see it's actually not doing what I was expecting. We have example and source, and I think the reason is this should be inside of here. Let's try one more time just to see if everything is working correctly. Uh, with a bit of luck, we're not going to get those two extra type definitions this time around. 
and that is now working correctly. We only have two files. We have the browser build and the ESM bundler build as well as our type definitions. Let's go ahead and actually make sure this bundler build is working correctly. I've actually prepared a Webpack example, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at that one now. I'll save these ones off, head back over here, and we have this very simple Webpack config. Well, it's not that simple, but that's Webpack for you. It's pretty complicated. We have all these different rules to load view files. We have the TS loader rules. We also have this dev server set up. Uh, nothing too exciting, but it's just plain old Webpack. If I have a look at the Webpack entry file, which is where it's going to read from, it's going to import the app file and then mount it. And if we have a look at app, we're going to see it's a very simple app that uses the vSwitch component, so we're testing it out. Let's go ahead and actually give this one a try. I'm going to head back to my terminal and just run yarn webpack, which is going to use uh, the, the build we just created and see if we can build something with webpack. So we have got a bunch of warnings. We can ignore those. It is building for production by default. If we have a look at what was actually built inside of main.js, it's this monster file. It's been completely minified and it's basically unreadable. It's actually bundling not only our component, all of view as well, and that is completely normal. We're not using a CDN here, we're bundling everything. So we have this unreadable mess. Nonetheless, it does work, and I'm going to show you that right now. I'm going to run my Python server again, head over to my browser, and this time we're going to use the Webpack uh, example instead. It's exactly the same, and it is working correctly, so we can be fairly confident our ES bundle build, ES bundle build is working correctly as well. So we have ES build and we have our uh, global build. The last thing we need is our server side rendering build. So let's go ahead and work on that one. And this is also going to be very easy, mainly due to all the work we did setting up that create entry function. Let's go ahead and create one more entry down here. This is going to be the CJS build and we're just going to use package.main. And this should be all we need to actually do. Let's go ahead and build this one more time and we should get one more build, the CJS build. If I do an LS on dist after this is created, uh, we are getting this warning, which we're going to fix up very soon, but it has created vSwitch CJS.js as well. We have a bit of a warning related to default exports. I don't want to go into this in too much detail, but it has recommended what we can do as well. We can specify the output somewhere. I believe we can specify output.exports to be default because we are using a default export. This is mainly related to how different modules uh, work with each other, but for now, I'm just going to do what it recommends and everything should be fine. So let's jump inside of here and say exports is just going to be default, and that is completely fine. We are using a default export, which is something I am happy to do. Let's go ahead and try this one more time and see how it goes. Bit of luck, our warning is going to be gone, and we can go ahead and test this one out now. Let's just have a quick look at what it's actually built for us. Uh, it is again remarkably similar to the original source code. It is doing that transform again, making var instead of const and removing the arrow functions. We are using the Node.js require syntax and we have this module.exports down here. And it's just going to default to that vSwitch component, the one we have just created up here. We can actually test this one out. I have a file called server.js. Uh, you can see here I'm importing create SSR app to create a server-side rendered app, rendered to string for the server renderer and my vSwitch component from the build we just created. It's very simple again, we have the data registered here, we're registering the component, and we have this vSwitch case here. The dot case is equal to big, so we expect this big template here to be rendered, and we do not expect the default template to be rendered. We then go ahead and render to string. Let's go ahead and try this one out. It is plain old Node.js, so I can just run it with Node, I'll jump inside of here, and this is actually working correctly as well. Uh, it's rendering the header, which is there, and it's going to render the text big, which is down here. A little bit hard to see, we also have these kind of weird comments. I'm not sure why these are here. I guess this is what the server-side renderer does, but this is working correctly. So we've managed to render to three different formats. We have the common JS build, we have the ES modules build, and we have the browser build. The final part is going to be publishing this. So let's go ahead and do that. You can see over here, I have my package.json file. We're already ready to publish. I've actually specified which files I'd like to publish. We only want to publish the disk directory and readme. It's also going to publish package.json for us, but what it is not going to do is publish all these other useless files like the TS config or the webpack config or the rollup config. We don't really need to send those to our end user, we're just going to send them the minimal files they need to use our project. So that's going to be just fine. The next thing I'm going to do is jump up here and actually enable this to be version 1.0.0. I'm actually going to deploy this live in this video, so with a bit of luck, this is going to work correctly. I'm going to head down here and actually go ahead and build this. The last thing I'm going to do is update my git ignore to ignore those distributable files. I don't want to include those in my, in my GitHub repository, and that should be all we need to do. So what I'm going to do now is publish this. We have our built-in uh, dist, so all I need to do is go ahead and publish it. I'm going to make sure I have the correct package name. I'm going to publish it under my own name. I don't really like to pollute the global NPM namespace too much. I think this is completely fine. And I'm also going to go ahead and do yarn publish in here. 
We are going to make access equal to public. You have to do this if you're publishing it under your own namespace or it's going to complain about not having a paid plan. With a bit of luck, this is going to work. It's asking for my password, which I'm going to type in. Uh, very difficult to type in, it's long and complicated. Hopefully I got that one right and we did, it has been published. So that should be on NPM right now under version 1.0.0. Let's actually go ahead and try this out. I have a new project set up for this. It's called vSwitch Tests. I'm going to go ahead and run yarn add and we're going to add that module and make sure everything is working correctly. It's going to be under my own namespace under vSwitch. And with a bit of luck, we're going to get the latest version, which is 1.0. Let's give that a moment to install and we have got uh, the latest version 1.0.0. I have created a test file for this as well. I'll just show you that really quickly. Inside of app.view, I have that exact example I showed you before and we're importing vSwitch from my own namespace. With a bit of luck, it's going to figure out that I am using an ES module. It's going to use this module file here to figure it out and everything should be working just fine. I am using yarn vite to run this one and hopefully it's going to work. Let's head over to our browser and try out our new module and everything is working correctly. It's all worked uh, built correctly. I served it from NPM and it was able to figure out the correct file to use by using the module key here. I'm pretty sure the rest are probably working fine as well. I will give those a test later on, but I am happy with this for now. If you wanna see all the source code for this, you can go over to my GitHub repository and grab it here, or you can even go ahead and try out this component in your own projects and let me know how it goes. Anyway, I think that's enough for now, so I'll see you in the next video.